All right, everybody. <clears throat> Another live stream. Um, deeper into quarantine, deeper into now, deeper into what's going on. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this one today. Uh, it's gonna. It's uh, my friend Dennis. Uh, from the musical group, well, it's not a group, it's really his his project. He has numerous projects, Ohms being the main one. Uh, well, actually, he'll explain what the main one is. Um, they may all be sort of uh, occupied different uh, places in, in his creative life. But yeah, Ohms and um, White Christian Male was another one. And uh, yeah, I, ooh. Here we go. I'm turning off that YouTube volume. Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, been friends with Dennis for maybe like three years or so. Um, yeah, as far as updates otherwise, for me generally, I don't really have a ton to report. I've been, um, I've been mixing a new Nothing Human single that's going to come out next week. Um, let's see, I never know whether to look into the camera or look at myself. I'm going to look at myself or at, at, uh, at Dennis when he's, when he's up here. Yeah, new Nothing single coming out next week or in a few days or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm like, after that Psalm Zero tour got cut short, I'm like, I really obviously want to get back out there as soon as uh, quarantine's lifted. But the thing is, by the time it's lifted, it may be so long from now that it's like that maybe it's not even the vibe to tour at that point. I'm already thinking about the next record. Um, I mean, if this shit goes on long enough, I may end up just making the whole next record from home sending files back and forth with Ron, all drum machine or something, amp simulators, this may have to get, uh, yeah, this may have to get a little bit off-road. Um, we'll see, though. I'm just, like, just beginning to write that stuff, but I'm, I'm pumped about it for sure. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, yes, Dennis from Olms. Dennis is a Detroit musician. Uh, yeah, we've known each other for about three years. I like, um... I met him just through online because I was uh, Psalm Zero. Uh, I had we were I was booking a tour for Psalm Zero, and I um, had a Detroit date booked, and um, and yeah, I just we had the date held, and I was just like looking around for who's who's awesome in town, great acts that I wanted to share the bill with. Looking at uh, looking at who my friends had played with when they were in town, uh, came across Olms and just hit hit Dennis up, and he was like, "Sure, let's play." Uh, yeah. Turns out they're awesome. Turns out he's awesome. He's one of my favorite internet personalities, internet brains. Um, you know, saying internet personality is kind of whack. It makes it sound like uh, makes it sound like someone's personality, or like or their it makes it sound like their brain is like a professional endeavor, uh, which is, I do not think that Dennis would describe himself that way, because um, he's too real, too real for that. But um, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe there doesn't need to be a bigger preamble than that. Um, as always, let me know if the mic is fucked up in the comments. I'm sure you will. Um, yeah. All right. Let's add, let's add my man Dennis in here. What's up, dude? Honestly, I think that like the best thing that a person can do is try to be a profession professional brain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. internet, internet brain is just a great, a great, uh, it's a, it's a great like um, goal to have to like. I mean, other people want to be influencers. Other people want to be, uh, you know, like famous online. But I think it's just an idea, like yeah. being a brain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just becoming psychically, brain. psychically linked for uh, with the, the uh, age of information. Yeah, well, we all are anyway, so it's like you may, oh, as, well yeah. do it, may as well do it in style, right? You know, some <laughs> some form of deliberateness. I guess because everyone's being so deliberate with how they're. Oh yeah, rolling. It's like you may as well, yeah. But um, I, I don't, yeah. No, but, yeah, uh, yeah. So what? I don't know, man. What's uh, let's what's up now, man? You know, okay, maybe like uh, I don't know. You tell people a little bit about I don't know. Well, let's start with how quarantine is going for you, man. Like, what's up? What's up with that? You you fucked over for work? You fucked over for gigs? Um, or are you just chilling? Well, gigs. I I barely go out anyway. I've just <laughs> I'm very much somewhat a misanthrope and uh i don't really go out anyway and you know i'm just busy being a dad and uh but no i got a job but uh luckily my workplace actually has taken this whole thing very seriously in fact my boss buckled down and he started hand making masks for everyone and got all this stuff to make everything like uh 
to make sure everyone's like n not getting infected and get the disinfectants. Mm -hmm. We've taken every like precaution there. So no, I got I got some work, but yeah, just mostly been uh, staying home. It's really not affected how I make my music. In fact, I've actually been a little bit more inspired, like in back in motivated with music again. But like, That's good. no, yeah, I've always like just sort of fucked around in my bedroom on a computer and synthesizers and stuff, which I need to pull out the physical synthesizer sometime soon. Oh, you use hardware too? I couldn't, I couldn't exactly tell. It sounded pretty um, warm and, and nice, but I could, you no, know, yeah, it's, it really, it really depends. It really depends. I mean, cause sometimes if you don't got to pull out a physical synthesizer, sometimes you just cheat and move around that. But, uh, no, yeah, it depends on the day, but I do want to like get back to like using some more physical stuff. But I mean, the warming, a lot of the warming and stuff, honestly, just comes from like, little tricks that I actually learned from a lot of like uh, hip hop producers when I was younger yeah. that I knew. Um, but yeah, I, it's really honestly the most annoying thing is like not being able to get to the store as much, like at least for like food and things like that. It, well, that's, that's fucking me up. Yeah. That's fucking me. Yeah. Up. I just, I mean, the thing that's killing me, I've been saying this is just like that not being able to do live. It's not being able to play live. Not yeah. that I even play live a ton. I mean, I mostly just play live. It's just good tour. to have the option. I mean, just, yeah, just to have one gig booked. Like, that's kind of, you know, I only like to play in a town where I'm living, you know, whether it's New York or L.A. now. I mean, I like to play just every, like, three months or something. But, yeah. But just to have that, you know, it's like it centers my life. I mean, you play out a fair amount, right? I mean, you play. Um, Here and there. I mean, obviously, like, I got a kid, so... First year yeah, and stuff. That's... First how, few how, how old's your you kid? Your kid's like one now, or what? He's like... almost one. He's gonna be one soon. So, that's so yeah. Cool, man. I mean, like when you're when you're you're doing that and stuff, you're not really thinking about going out and playing live. And honestly, it's honestly been a good excuse for me because I'm not a bar guy. <laughs> um, it's not like I don't like my booze. It's just I usually, you know, will just sit there at home, watch TV, or like just shit out tweets or whatever. Yeah, you're grown. You're a grown person. You're an extremely online adult. <laughs> exactly. Like, my, like myself. Uh, yeah, man. Well, that's yeah. Cause like, um, I mean, you're really prolific as far as just the music goes. I mean, uh, for anyone here who has not heard Ohms, um, how would you? I know it's weird to describe your own shit. I don't know. How would you describe like um, your main I, shit to people? Uh. I guess the best way to describe it is I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Uh, it's definitely, okay. I guess you can say it's like got splashes of whatever you'd vaguely call goth thrown yeah. in and then a little bit of ABBA and uh, um, like industrial music thrown in. So uh, that's the big thing. Yeah, like a lot definitely of definitely industrial vibes in there. Yeah. yeah new, a new little bit, stuff, but I mean, yeah. like, a big thing for me has uh that's like a huge like influence is uh like the disco and um like just like older industrial like from the 80s and uh 70s and prog too prog rock is a huge influence on me really we we never talked about prog i actually i didn't know you were a prog head because i can't uh oh god yeah, that that i don't detect so much in the music except in so far as it's you know unusual well, well if you like if you listen to like some of like the synth solos and stuff a lot of it's really inspired by like the ridiculous stuff that like Manfred Mann and like um, Emerson Lake and Palmer would do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's toned down because, you know, you have to, it's everything has to be kind of quantized with the type of music I'm doing. But it's definitely, you hear like that sort of like, wow, kind of like synth going on. But, yeah. Like real, like real synth solos, like actual ripping. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Like, cause like that's the big thing is like, um, that's one thing that really, like with, what happened with me was I started out as a folk musician and then yeah, like, I did not know. yeah, I started out as a folk musician. I was inspired by like, um, uh, Bob Dylan, um, Leonard Cohen, That's uh, funny. a lot of that kind of, yeah, a lot of that kind of stuff. And, um, as I got more into folk, I got more into psychedelic music through like old, old Pink Floyd, like Sid Barrett era. Then I got into stuff like, and at the same time that I was doing that, I was getting into stuff like Manfred Mann, King Crimson, things like that. So yeah, Prague actually led me to um, German electronic. And then I got down the rabbit hole with that. And then when I started implementing all of my influence together, it turned out to be 
the end product was Dark Wave. And I already knew about Depeche Mode and stuff, but I really started getting into it. And then I got into Fad Gadget and the rest is history. Like right, basically right. basically I accidentally got into Dark Wave through prog music. That's cool, man. I mean that's that's a, a road that I like just rarely hear, you know, because I'm into both, but it didn't prog definitely did not lead to 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 Dark Wave, you know, because I don't know, it's just oh, yeah. like it's it is such a different um but I can see how psychedelia would be sort oh, of yeah. like a, a pivot, a pivot point, you know, because it's like Floyd. It's like kind of complex, but also dark. Well, so it's if you the... listen to the song Interstellar Overdrive, it's basically an early goth song. Is that is that Floyd or? or... Yeah, Pink Floyd. Yeah. Um, it, I, I don't it, really know that much Pink Floyd. I'm embarrassed to say or I'm not embarrassed at much but, oh, no, like, but yeah, that that i don't know i really it's like a hole in my well like the thing about it the thing about it with pink floyd is like prior to uh you know the whole like uh like duh, 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 kind of stuff they were doing right. uh <laughs> pink floyd had a really dark presence um and they also kind of were like in some ways like you look at like robert smith and like a lot of people because everyone talks about jim morrison being an early prototype for a lot of like goth like his for sure lyrics and like the doors being an early prototype but pink floyd like if you listen to interstellar overdrive you have the motorics you have the throbbing bass you have the um joy division type like uh distorted guitar and the pedal work Okay. And that's that's a big thing. A lot of people don't really realize that the song Interstellar Overdrive was probably for a lot of people, like especially like when they were growing up, it, the people who made goth music, it was probably a huge prototype for them because you have like that sort of like Bauhaus sort of like twangy, wiggly, weird psychedelia going on, but it's really dark. But then you look at images of Pink Floyd and they're like, you know, they're wearing black, they're wearing eye makeup, their hair is a fucking mess and they look like, like they're strung out on cough syrup. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like the end of the 60s. It's where it's like, this yeah. is not about, you know, brother, it's not there's a war anymore. going on and we need to stop it. It's more just like, I'm from space, I'm gonna fucking die, like whatever. Like Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, It's really in some ways it's where i guess postmodernism relapsed into romanticism is that's what i think that a lot of goth music is okay what was so, so then what which would be the postmodern in in that i'm trying like uh like the psychedelia beat poets or, or? beat poets psychedelia a lot of that sort of transhuman like uh sort of like uh transcendental sort of like thinking like nothing matters because this like stardust but basically i think that when it came to the end of the 60s there was this weird spike in people who became disillusioned they became sort of galvanized in their views and then i think there's um a lot of the, that like came to a head with punk music because eventually you know you look at um a lot of post-punk it came it's post-punk i mean you're like looking at basically um how people really started at first being uh you know, they, they'd be rebellious because, you know, the war, Thatcher era. But then people kind of became a little bit more, well, you look at the case with Joy Division. You know, they became, well, Joy Division. Um, they dropped all of the empty window dressing and fall it all and sloganeering for something that I think was more personal and yeah, just more realistic. Yeah, just personal bleakness. Yeah, it's like the least hippie-ish shit like yeah that was like when it was really done like the 60s yeah were, 60s exactly and and 70s any like uh remnants yeah. of the 60s were just completely completely obliterated <clears throat> well that's like so that so when did you kind of um because you're you're quite a bit younger right how old are you or young younger than 24 you? my same yeah man all right so um yeah so you'll actually be able to play catch with your kid without being in a fucking wheelchair basically <laughs> is the vibe um <laughs> Um, not that your kid has to play catch, you know. Yeah. Uh, but um, oh, I'm taking him hiking, man. You're taking him hiking, yeah. Oh yeah. That's cool. That that's a good like gender neutral uh, thing to. That's just what I've always <laughs> done, play. honestly. <laughs> like, honestly, if you can like get food from the woods, you can live anywhere. So you're going full survivalist with your kid. Oh no, I've done that for years, man. I've always, uh, I've always known about like you know what's good to eat. Uh, what's good to find for medicine, things like that. That's something that's always been, I basically quit the boy Scouts cause they were too pussy. So <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, basically I, for a long time, I've been really into in ranger mode, 
but you know it's not it's not some sort of like weird like doomsday prepper thing it's just i think that it's good to have that sort of skill and it's nice to reconnect with nature and it's also nice to like really know about the animals and stuff then you're never bored you know like um right yeah it's more so fighting boredom rather than a uh rather than a uh weirdo in the woods <laughs> yeah, no no i know yeah well that's yeah. okay so yeah man <sighs> young dad that's sick and like what um but so yeah, no, because I brought up your age because I was just like, how long? How long have you been doing Olms? Because I met you like three oh. years ago, and was it already long? Uh, since 2011, yeah. Right. But like before that, I was like messing with, um, you know, obviously an acoustic guitar, uh, multi effects pedal, and a MIDI keyboard. But like I was actually for for a period before I even did the folk stuff, I was doing something I didn't understand yet. It was like a droning noise drum sort of thing. So it kind of was actually already industrial music, then I didn't know it. And I honestly, I for a long time was under the impression that industrial music was just Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. And I thought that Nine Inch Nails, like, and it's not that I hate Nine Inch Nails. It's just I felt like it was a they bit too... Rule. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. They do rule. It's just a lot of the bands adjacent to them are like, juggalo bands like you know. <laughs> yeah 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 so you i was just yeah you, you don't like juggalo shit because that's homegrown you know Detroit. no god yeah i mean i don't <laughs> I mean, have anything personally yeah. against anyone who's into that stuff it's just not my it's not my stroke you know yeah yeah because a lot of i feel like a lot of stuff that's considered a lot of stuff that was considered <laughs> cheesy or dumb or ridiculous people keep reassessing it like oh we need to like reassess new metal oh, or god. Reassess this. but i feel like juggalo stuff it's just that's like not even being reassessed, even by according the to Jacobin, <laughs> it is really ja the, ja Jacobin fucks with uh, with juggle. Yeah, they're they're like well, they're they have great yeah. praxis. <laughs> well, I know that they're anti racist, I do know that, which is but cool the thing is, they're not. They I seem mean, like they might be, they seem like I've met, a, I've met plenty, I've met plenty of racist juggalos, like, I mean, yeah, like by like the whole like code like icp they're they're good they're nice guys and stuff but like yeah. and they say don't be racist that's a great message but a lot of these guys are like a lot of them are basically like the dude you meet in the cookie monster hat outside the mall and they yeah, yeah. don't know why they hate gays or blacks but they just do oh is, the, is that their vibe they're kind of a lot of them a lot of them <laughs> but not 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 everyone obviously it just, I, mean, I thought the whole point is that they're kind of like wiggers or whatever or maybe you can't say that anymore <laughs> <laughs> thank god they're not in china um but uh <laughs> juggalos in china that would be sick oh what's up alejandro um, no fucking um it's but yeah like uh yeah, it's 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 really yeah. They Jacobin was like claiming that Juggalos were gonna do some sort of revolutionary. Shit. But that's another funny thing about Jacobin and like all those types. Like in that this quarantine is really showing is you're really actually starting to see the polarization of classes, and you're starting to see who's who. Like we've already seen who's who, but you're starting to see all the Brooklyn Peter Pan dipshits finally getting like exposed. Right, right, right. Like, um, even more so than, no, than, yeah. than before. Even more so because they're like, oh, God, they're like, I'm I'm in a house that a family friend isn't using right now. And, like, the thing is, when you look at the upper class, you know that, like, a hundred kids have been raped in that house probably. Oof. Too yeah. many pedophiles. Well, depending on, uh, yeah, we, we've talked a lot about this. I know class, uh, class critique and analysis is like a big big part of your worldview which i definitely want to get even deeper into actually you're talking about that pedophile shit i feel like that's like that's like super ruling class like oh yeah aristocrat like i feel like upper middle like bourgeois but that's like that, that's less that, that's like less of the organized uh organized yeah. pedophile rings I, I don't know no i mean like uh that's the thing though is that a lot of these people and stuff who have presence um there's a book called uh, Social Media is Bullshit that a friend of mine uh, actually was telling me about. Uh, it's apparently this, um, basically anything that goes viral or gets big is paid for. And a lot of these people who are like out there and stuff being politically active, they're usually like, I don't know, like the son or daughter of like the CEO of DreamWorks or some shit. You know, like I've seen and, a lot of that for sure. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is, the thing is too, like, and again with like the coastal Peter Pan mm. sort of socialism, like it's <laughs> the thing is like none of no one wants their brand of revolution because most of us live in Middle America, and like 
honestly, like you look at it, like, yes, there's like has and have nots in like places like New York, like very much so. But the thing is, the thing is a lot of the time though, if you like, if you're looking at people like they're, that sure they're not making as much money and they're living in a small apartment, but they have sort of like a lot of opportunities that don't pop up anywhere else you know what i mean just they geographically have, there's a sort yeah. of cu- cultural capital to even being in new york exactly e- so, even if you're somewhat working class i think that's that's probably true yeah but in in a lot of ways it's like especially in like brooklyn and the gentrified areas it's a neverland sort of situation and this the is thing true yeah, the thing true. is and there's a huge joke that me and my friends really have is that the coasts while they're not producing anything like cars or like things like that one of their biggest exports is bad ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could see that, man. I could see that. What, what, um, what is like? We would go, go on though about the Peter Pan thing because I, I sort of, I always, like, I was very much a part of that Brooklyn like two thousands thing, and um, I, I am largely, maybe not in my heart, you know, I like to think I'm not part of it, but socioeconomically, culturally, I've very much been a part of what you're talking about. Liberal arts, liberal arts educated. And in the two thousands, very much part of that sort of as Brooklyn was being gentrified. I I did always kind of hate the Peter Pan, this sort of like child, like, you know, like, Oh, we're like adulting, you know, the sort of like the animal, (laughs) sort of the animal collective of it all, you know, tree houses and like the sort of like never been punched in the face sort of, sort of energy uh of of people. Brooklyn goes hard it'll sue you <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, um I have a little different perspective on it because I'm actually from New York no know, yeah I'm very very much sort of uh, upper middle class but you know it is it it's a little different to have seen the city sort of turn into the Peter Pan the Peter oh, Pan yeah. thing but but what, what are some of the like the really bad ideas I mean I agree with you and like do well I think it's just the about, general I want to hear you riff I think it's the general like I think it's the general uh for one, LARPing as poor people, those kinds of people who are really tr- going to be the future of coastal hegemony. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. Honestly, I think that it's really dangerous because most of them aren't living in the rest of the world because they have this sort of, again, Peter Pan bubble. They don't, <laughs> like, when we're talking about like bad ideas, like, just look at like what BuzzFeed shares every day. Who the fuck wants to eat? a fucking burger that jizzes on you did you see that shit <laughs> no no what is it it's like uh it's no, like the but... bun the bun is full of like white cheese and it like sprays out like a pimple it's disgusting <laughs> but no but there's a bunch of dumbass food like when i was in new york and like new york's actually pretty awesome i thought it was pretty cool like i love chinatown like and i wasn't really in the chinatown tourist is area. still sick dude chinatown yeah, is still, it's, yeah it's always gonna be sick yeah but like the fucking thing is like my friend my friend when i was down there we're, we went to a pizza place and he goes yeah you seen that like video online of like the pizza with the tiny pizza slices on top of it this is the place oh, that God. did that i'm just like oh fuck that that <laughs> that really does encapsulate a certain, yeah because it's like meta pizza it's like oh like pizza you i don't pizza it's like well like the the thing is it's so bloodless and soulless that literally like a stupid idea is the seasoning for a bland dish yeah yeah. that's the (laughs) that's the fucking thing about it but and like again these people are talking about revolution revolution sorry you're not you don't have a gun you're not gonna do (laughs) shit from the coast we hate you like we we are going to be the people over in Middle America who are going to come and eat you because that's how it actually will work. I mean that's that's what a peasant revolution is. When you look at that like the Peter Pan, Pan bubble thing, no, your hegemony doesn't actually work over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 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 you're kind of so you're talking about so so you would call yourself well you don't you're not big on calling yourself stuff which is which is one of the reasons why we vibe so well. But but you're talking about revolution, so you are you want class class war like now i mean it's already is i think class war, i think you're ready, that, you're ready for this it's not that i want it i think it's just gonna happen and the yeah. thing is <laughs> yes but the thing is it's also for like looking at the dynamics of it it's not gonna revolution does, is not gonna happen in brooklyn half of those people will be killed by gusts of wind over 40 miles per hour <laughs> i mean half the yeah. time they, they can't even function if they haven't like had sex in two days 
I mean, for God's sake, these are diaper people. <laughs> like, yeah, man, yeah. I, I, uh, you're into guns. Oh yeah, like guns? Gun, yeah, yeah. I do like guns. I'm very much for gun uh, gun rights, and I think that anyone. Me too. I love guns. By principle, anyone who thinks that guns uh, sh- shouldn't be in possession of people is an enemy of the working class. Yeah, but, yeah. My my girl won't let me get guns yet. <laughs> I, I, I was like, I was pushing her. I was just like, oh, what the fuck? Like, you know, but then I left the stove on a couple days ago and I was just like, I just lost. I, I just, I just put an extra two years before, before we can yeah. get it done here. If I'm leaving the fucking <laughs> stove on, it's just like, Ugh. but, um, which, no, I, yeah. do you have, do you have some at the house or, uh, no comment. Okay. Oh, is that not? Okay. Well, yeah. it's, it's more <laughs> of a, you know, no comment, but, fair um, enough, fair enough. I, but, I had a yeah actually yeah. no I can't I can't say what I was gonna say but yeah yeah I do not have any guns uh, so far but I'd I'd like to go out to the desert and do some shooting which no one yeah could dude. do under quarantine you yeah. could do that and it would be I think that'd be very good psychologically to just just fire I, off some rounds you know honestly something I actually want to do this summer is right now we have a really bad invasive crayfish problem so I'm gonna probably do a lot of that kind of hunting because you can eat them and I like crayfish and. I like the environment, and if I I'm do gonna... love crayfish. Wait, you can shoot them. You shoot crayfish. No, no. <laughs> you can shoot with a BB insane. gun, but <laughs> you can shoot it with a BB gun. But I don't think that's that's not very humane. No, what uh, you do is you can actually make some nice bottle traps, and uh, you can you can get a lot of them. But there's these huge mead fuckers called rusties. They're uh, they're an invasive species here. They're really doing a lot of damage. So I actually really yeah. wanna I want to uh, hunt those motherfuckers and. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing I really want to do when it comes to hunting. But that's sick. I, I didn't know that all this. I didn't know crayfish were a thing in in Detroit at all. Oh, really? oh yeah, dude. We we have a lot of crazy shit. I mean, we have jellyfish in Michigan. No kidding, man. I don't. Yeah, I, I guess I don't really know. I don't know your neck of the woods that that well, man. We dude, had a cool show there on the Psalm Zero tour. The Ko dot. Yeah. Was pretty cool sanctuary. Was the yeah. Yeah. No, cool. that was a uh, UFO factory. Uh, well, the ones that we, yeah, oh, the one that okay. we did, the one that we did oh, yeah. together, but just the one last month before the oh, yeah, yeah. tour got got cut short. Yeah, the we put, had, yeah, yeah. It was, um, yeah, no, yeah I, have, I, have, I have a lot of fun in Detroit, but I haven't really done a ton of like hanging out there, you know. Like, dude, like, honestly, Michigan is a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I mean, honestly, we have miniature deserts, we have savannas, we have mountains, we have giant miniature oceans basically the great lakes yeah. but yeah we have crayfish we got jellyfish we got we got like a little bit of everything here even cactuses but um Sick. yeah michigan's like a, a crazy place if you want to basically experience a little bit of everything in one place michigan is the place to do it but crazy, um do, yeah do you kind of like um would you say i don't know like because i is your music like do you think of it as like Detroit shit? Like, do you, I know you rep Detroit just uh, like, as, a, as a place, but is your stuff? Cause I know I think about house music and techno. I, think I definitely don't really take rap, much but... influence from that. Um, I more so take a lot of influence from a lot of the uh, industrial from Canada and Northern Michigan. So um, it's definitely a Michigan thing, but honestly, Detroit is just the nearest geographical city to me. I really, I really am not that much part of it. Uh, I don't Word. go, I don't go there much or anything like that. So it's it's it'd be weird for me to be like, oh yeah, I'm Detroit. I'm not Eminem. Like <laughs> Okay, yeah. Well you're oh, so you're like Ann Arbor where you live or you're not? No, no, I'm Detroit. I'm like in the Detroit suburbs, but it's it's right. really I'm not like right in Detroit. I'm basically where all of uh the weapons and tanks are built. So Yeah, yeah. Do you fuck with garage rock? Are you a, are you like a garage rock fan or like is that a thing? Um I do like garage rock. Uh, a lot of like this stuff, like uh, Music Machine. It's pretty good. Is that is that Detroit or no? I think those guys were actually British, but I could be wrong. The Monks were also good too, but a lot of those weirdo bands from the '60s, I dig. Word word. Is that but is is that still a thing in Detroit? Like, is garage rock still like a homegrown I, kind of? I, honestly, it's mostly kids from Bloomfield with weird divorced dads who force them to play guitar then they get like bowl cuts and they <laughs> it's funny because you're, you're describing some stereotype that i'm just utterly unfamiliar with like i just it's, it's real like, it's like in your realm that's like a trope but i'm just like what it's no yeah that? no it's it's basically just like you know the band greta van fleet yeah i they're i uh, from, one of they're... my guitar students wanted me to teach them some greta van fleet the kid was Ugh. like 11 i was like you got it you know it's all yeah for sure old, but um but yeah they're, they're there. 
their dad's a congressman and he's like basically it's a dad rock dad and basically they apparently all got like forced into like being Greta Van Fleet so (laughs) it's really funny honestly like they're like they're basically like the products of like political nepotism (laughs) but they're from Michigan they're from Frankenmuth which is our little Bavaria so what's what's the vibe like you mean it's uh it's, it's like a that's it's like a bavarian city yeah oh, it's a, word okay yeah it's uh some people there even speak german still and the signs are still in german and stuff so yeah it's a german city in michigan damn man that's fucking yeah so you're gonna you're holding it down in michigan pretty much that's that's like for good you're gonna like hold it down i mean so i that's that's where you're gonna yeah. raise family and do you know like go probably i mean i like michigan a lot um i mean if there was ever opportunity somewhere and it was in place that you know my wife was into or like, it, you know, if, you know, but like, I mean, honestly, yeah, I'm probably going to be hanging out in Michigan. I might even move to the upper peninsula, which is basically like Finland because everyone there's Finnish. And, uh, it's like kind of this weird, mysterious place. Like there's barely anyone there. So, yeah. Um, Easy, man, what, what yeah. are, so like, I'm, I'm kind of curious just to shift it to like your, your, your creative work and stuff like you got like we're often talking about i almost can't even keep up sometimes with your sort of prolific like uh stuff you're doing like around music like other than music you're like writing a sci-fi book or like yeah or, or... i have a lot of different like literature projects i've been like doing here and there but the problem is like i'm so add that i don't stick with what i that's a huge problem of mine that's why i'm like prolific with music is just because i'm like but like with like uh Yeah, I've been, like, working on, like, a few different projects. I actually want to um, work on a, uh, basically, a screenplay right now, too, um, that basically recounts the um, story of how the Huns uh, founded Budapest and stuff like that, uh, because it's a really interesting legend. So I wanted to make a psychedelic Western um, based off of these old legends of these uh, Hunnic uh horse lords so sick yeah that's they, your um that's your heritage right or you're, you're hungry, yeah, part, you're mixed, yeah i guess we talked yeah about that, partly right? yeah um on my dad's side i'm like a mix of things like basically british and south african and then like um on my mom's side i'm like part jewish part italian part like jesus christ a lot of stuff but like a good amount of it is hungarian and i ended up looking like my hungarian relatives so like that's something i guess i feel close to but um i feel like how how people end up looking often really affects how they kind of identify like ethnically you know like or maybe that's just over oh yeah probably everywhere because like like my girlfriend is like half half like pure finnish and then half like her dad is like mixed uh like ukrainian and italian but she just like looks a million percent finnish so she just oh yeah she's like ride or die for like finland you know but it's it's finland rules um i actually ordered some cloudberry seeds i'm gonna be growing some of those soon so sick yeah dude they're crazy uh you know what's actually crazy too is hungarians and finnish people are actually close relatives I forget, is that like the finno-ugric languages or something is that yeah 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 yeah. finno-ugric i was actually gonna um probably after quarantine work on reclaiming my uh citizenship because they have this like uh program in hungary where um if you're hungarian they basically want you back so uh i'm gonna probably actually try to get my european citizenship so that way i can actually like you know do stuff there and make money Right. But yeah, is that, yeah, is that kind of part of the new sort of right wing wave over like nationalism? Right? No, you know, they've like they've had it for a long time. Right? They've had that for a very long time. I mean, yeah, like like with with Hungary, they're definitely pretty right wing. But like, uh, it's really something that they've just had for a really really long time. I think it's also because of um, there's really a scarcity outside of Hungary of Hungarian immigrants especially nowadays so i think it's probably i think it might be a right-wing thing i don't know but yeah well i mean not necessarily take advantage. It, well yeah it's, it's just like an interesting i don't know like um i think it's just one of those european things that's like adjacent to that but it's more so just a folkish sort of like yeah yeah well that that's the thing yeah. i didn't even mean it in, in a bad way in fact oh yeah it's, it's sort of like because being hungarian is an actual thing way oh, yeah. more than being like a white american which means 
very little in my mind, whereas being at an, a Hungarian, that's an actual ethnic. Yeah, Magyar. Uh, c- a culture, yeah, 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 it actually like, yeah. is is something. Um, it's a weird one, too. Uh, like, but uh, I've, I've definitely kept a lot of, like, the cultural things from it. Like, um, I make a really good chicken paprikash and goulash, yeah, so. yeah. Ooh, but it's actually yeah, goulash, yeah. so. But, yeah, in fact, if anyone ever gives you goulash with uh, noodles, just flip them off for me. Like that's not the real. That's not the real. No, shit. if it's good goulash, you don't need shit with it. If it's good goulash, like uh, that. That's the that's the thing. Like if it's like got ketchup and shit, blech, disgusting. Well, sure, yeah, I would imagine that that's not. that's that's horrible. That's not real. Yeah. No, all you need is some good ass peppers. That's so that's want, a huge so, thing for us. So, so you want to go over there? Like um, you're thinking uh. You think and go over to Hungary and and make or like work on the the movie over there or or well no no I'm uh, the the screenplay thing is just like a little fun project I want to do and maybe someday I'd I'd like pitch it somewhere but no it's more so I want to go there because there's more benefits to being there than there are in the USA um, and on top of that the wages are good and there's a lot of work for people who speak Hungarian and. Um, English and I speak a little bit of Hungarian, but not a bunch. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's basically I'm slightly above a person who's going there for a day or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder, so. like the music scene in uh, in Budapest seems like it could be sick because I do know one guy there who puts on. He's like an amazing like free jazz and Im- improv drummer. This guy. Oh Blanche. yeah. Um, actually, if you ever go over there, you should look up Balaj. Actually, a- anyone listening, Balaj uh, Pandi is uh, is totally sick. And Psalm Zero played there like maybe like five, six years ago. And it was actually a really cool show. We opened for Full of Hell and it was like kids were, were pumped in Budapest. So Dude, I have a good rules. impression of that place, man. That fucking rules. No, yeah, Budapest is a beautiful city. I haven't gone yet, but I've heard really good things. I've had people invite me there. It's just yeah. like being a person who like you don't do, you're not on any labels or anything like that. It's really, it's really like one of those things where it's just, not realistic to just jump out and tour to europe i mean i could make money in europe but yeah once you get over it's it's weird europe is like an easier nut to crack than it probably seems you know like i don't know the whole the whole i I feel like i've talked about this with so many musicians on the show that just being on a label it's (sighs) sometimes in certain cases it completely hooks you up in a million ways yeah in other other cases it just doesn't really and yeah exactly and, and then there's other people who just aren't even working with anything uh uh, in the mainstream music industry, uh, wh- why you know people who are just not on labels and they're just totally doing tours and making money and it's just no, yeah, uh, just because you happen to just you just know people and people because I know you have people like just on the internet. I I know without touring a lot, you have like a fan base. I mean, it seems you know which people... is which is like shocking, honestly. Yeah. It's not man because the music's good and it gets out there online and you're and you're prolific, you know, because it's. I do feel what you were saying about the ADD thing. Oh shit, we got because uh, I'm looking at the comments here, Dennis. I get yeah, Udo. Cool. What's up from Lima? I don't I don't know Udo. Welcome to the chat. Um, yeah, just like I I was feeling what you were saying about just like I don't officially have ADD, but the fact that I just I have trouble fucking my attention span is fucking yeah. fucked up. So I'm pretty sure I have it. So I I uh, I totally relate how music. You can you can get it. Yeah, you can, exactly. You can blast through the ADD and, and you know what one session of hyper focusing uh, in the in the manic hyper focus you know oh, yeah. side, side of the pendulum and your tracks are done. Writing is harder. I'm working on this essay now that is, I'm it's going to be really good, but it's yeah, writing is a lot harder. You know, screenplay this kind of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, but yeah, man. Peru and Costa Rica. That's awesome. Yeah, man. I don't know Alejandro. I know a little bit. Uh, Udo, I don't know. Uh, you, yeah. yeah. I've always yeah. wanted to. I've always wanted to go to Costa Rica. They have a, like a bunch of amazing animals there. I'd like totally love to see up close. But yeah. Yeah, I haven't done much Central America. I've never played in in Central America or or, or South America. You know, I mean, or Asia. You know, really just just the states and yeah. Europe and stuff. But um, I'll tell you, man. Playing solo though, you can get some shit happening. Because in Europe, it's like even just the like the DIY ish, like the kind of gigs that you would do in the States, those gigs over there just pay a notch or two more, you know? And if you do a bunch yeah. of, d- it does kind of add up. Like if you're playing, no, yeah. it's like, Oh shit, I'm actually, it's, like, it's definitely something you got to put the work into, but I'm sure it's definitely like worth it when you like actually get out there and do it. Like 
it's just obvious right now we got the quarantine and stuff but like oh, hopefully no. if if like uh if i can actually do like if i actually can like get my um hungarian citizenship then like that'd make europe way easier yeah because they're part of the uh union so <clears throat> yeah. yeah i think so man for sure well so like so yeah i don't know let's talk about okay so like projects right like shit you're doing so ohms you described ohms everyone should check that out and it, yeah there's industrial elements you know uh w would you what are the uh are the other projects different? Because White Christian Mail, I love that's kind of... White Christian Mail was different. definitely more of a foray into, like, harder sounds, more found sounds, more um, yeah. polyrhythms, uh, a lot of that sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, there's definitely stuff on there that sounds like Ohms, but the thing is, when you're a person who has multiple projects, like a bunch of them, you kind of want to keep a bit, a little bit of elements from each one. Like, that's at least been my strategy, and it's in its yeah. help from each one so that way people can go into it softly. Because if I'm doing something that's drastically different, I feel like I um, I, I want to basically put in something for everybody. But yeah, yeah, like with White Christian Mail, that one was more of a foray into like sort of like body horror industrial and po again, polyrhythms and found sounds and weird yeah. textures. It was a little more purely rhythmic. Yeah, less song, less songy. Yeah, right? less like, songy yeah. and more yeah. so like chanty with the lyrics and more guttural with the vocals. But Yeah, man. And then you got this new thing, The, the Drove, which... The Drove is... sounds like both. It sort of like sounds the, like... Oh, The Drove is actually... Something. The Drove is actually like... I've been posting stuff on The Drove because I can't um, access my old SoundCloud anymore. I don't know what, how. What, what happened? Just like, forgot the password or some shit? I mean, you can... Yeah, it's that stupid. But yeah, it's. I think <laughs> I forgot the password or some shit. I can't access it anymore, so... But The Drove is just a place where I've been, like, putting um, uh, stuff like that. But it's actually also... Uh, basically, I have been playing around with the idea of making a project that does a lot of um, sampling of, like, tribal music and uh drums and stuff like that and basically making sort of a um sort of weird mix of martial industrial and uh sort of more indigenous sounds interesting of what, um, what, what culture like or like what i've what mostly actually been i've been really really uh interested in the cultures of papua new guinea um a lot of uh the cultures of southeast asia there's a lot of really interesting stuff um and a lot of stuff like um, when it comes to like, um, I guess uh, a lot of like the freakier ends of like that sort of folk magic sort of stuff. Because a lot of people, when they talk about a lot of that, like, you know, tribal stuff, they're trying to do like sort of that weird, wimpy Wiccan thing. I want to get into the blood and sinew of, I guess, um, primordial man. Uh so People that's, dealing with magic and stuff, or well, I mean, I guess Wiccan yeah. could be magic too. But but well, um, I mean, it was founded fifty years ago. It's not exactly like an indigenous actual sort of thing. I mean, like Wiccanism is actually, it was actually made by a sex pest pedophile fifty years ago, and actually more so borrows from Christianity, and um, then it sprinkles a little bit of vaguely druid stuff on it. But okay. it never existed in ancient in the ancient world. Wiccanism, right, right. it's yeah. It's a right, it's an imagined a sort of imagination. Well, it's it's yeah, of. it's it's a yeah, it's a it's revisionism. But yeah, um, uh, yeah, it's basically I really with that project the drove. I really want to um, go into the sort of um, like I don't know, like that sort of you're being chased down at night sort of thing. Like one thing that really fascinates me is like a lot of like the the stories of tribal warfare. Like um, I was reading. A lot of stuff like the people who first like were exploring Papua New Guinea and like just a lot of the stuff they learned from these like uh, these people in these uh, tribes like it's just fascinating like how they actually would like conduct their politics and warfare and everyday life and um, that's what I wanted to do with the drove is sort of have that sort of really human sweaty fearful sort of um, feeling of you could be eaten. You could be skinned alive. Someone's coming after you. Yeah. This is this is actual war. This is a, the, a yeah a warlike situation. Warlike skin times, to skin. Warlike people. Well, yeah, man. I mean, it's. I think. And 
I think a lot of us are sort of trying to steel ourselves for a possible more brutal futures, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, for me, uh, yeah. for me, it's more so just a, a exploration of the subject because it's fascinating. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's not it's not exactly for me like something where I'm really trying to think like, oh, yeah, it's going to be civil war because no one wants a civil war all out. But I just think it, that's inevitable. That's I do I do think that too. I mean, it's just a question of how bloody or versus how peaceful it is. You know, the sort of yeah. secession or the the crumbling of the of of the United States. And I've heard people on the on the far left and far right be like that. You know, be like this is probably a good idea. You know, um, yeah, just which, crumbling into smaller states. I mean, the sort yeah. of the 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 creepy thing about that is like once you have that, then you are probably next dealing with the sort of Confederate situation where like. You yeah, know, 200 miles away, people are practicing slavery, and it's like you can't really do anything about it. And it's like you know, yeah, your your that's... state is like this touchy feely, nice place that you it's like. It's truly but terrifying. It's a yeah. So that's like one of those things. Uh, but but I... it still might be preferable to way the way things are going. I, I don't. I don't. Know. I mean, we haven't tried it yet. We don't know. Yeah. But um, if we're like looking at like what's really happening, especially with this, like how we were talking about the haves and have nots being kind of really revealed and really the schism being finally sort of, you know, realized. Yeah. Um, I think that really, I'm not really thinking that it's going to be something where it's going to be an all out civil war yet. I think though, that people are going to realize that there's no such thing as peaceful protest. Right. Um, there has right. never been peaceful protest. The sixties were a psyop. It was all basically meant to make people a little bit, bit more complacent for the future where everything would be more organized because I buy that. I buy that. You know, it's, it's yeah. really, it's really that flower power shit never did anything. Martin yeah, Luther well, King is... did something because he got shot. He actually died for his cause. Yes. Yeah. He was a lot a more. It's a lot more at at at, at risk in his exactly. case than the civil rights movement. I, it's but interesting because we're talking about that civil civil war possibility, which it sounds like the way we're talking about it, it's like partially geographic but partially class. And I I sort of yeah I, I, I wonder what you think. Like, do you think there will be? Do you think there's some that there will be some kind of solidarity with the poor and working class on the coasts? having solidarity with the poor and working class in, in in middle america like you know what i mean like do you see yourself i mean do you see your people and your neck of the woods kind of uniting with like i don't know, think like americans poor, are... poor people on staten island or something you know like is that a, an alliance I, or is that i don't a... think that americans are that open-minded or that aware um yeah. personally in a perfect world i'd be an anarchist so like it's not a perfect world, though. But like the thing is, yeah. if we're look like looking at it honestly, I I don't think that Americans are that uh, I don't think Americans are that aware enough to be organized or to actually get anything done. And they've been conditioned that way. They they all have an opinion, but they don't have a solution, and they also don't have any cognitive ability to put themselves aside for a solution. So. I don't think that that's going to happen, unfortunately. It'd be nice, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think that it's going to be a clusterfuck. Look at Occupy Wall Street. I mean, it it really didn't get much done at all. That's because they went into it just with empty protesting. That one, that one was just, oh, we're going to take up your space. Okay, but the thing is, yeah. they didn't go into it with organized ideology. They didn't have a plan. They didn't have a real manifesto. They didn't have any real yeah. demands. They just kept on screaming, fix it, fix it, fix it. But again, you didn't see any change come out of that. Yeah, and, well, there's a lot of stuff with like just the, the idea of sort of raising awareness, raising yeah. consciousness, you know, like the conversation, quote unquote, you know. The thing like, is, uh, yeah. yeah, before anything like that would even happen, I think it's really going to have to be a cultural change. And that's what's definitely happening right now. But I don't know how far that's going to, you know, stretch to people. I think that right now, though, it's really something that... Um, is a question of how we're going to mutate culturally from this whole situation. Because honestly, like if we're like looking at it, there's people, people are not organized. And there's, again, there's people who, there's thousands of people laying in refrigerator trucks because we have 
you know, hundreds of more uh, morgues being filled to the brim. My brother is an ICU nurse. He sees this every day. He's been having to wheel bodies to the morgue every day. And yeah. these people aren't going to be in the morgue. They're going to be in a cold truck because they can't be buried right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. while this is happening, you have celebrities singing songs by a woman beating rapist. And you have coastal journalists talking about their fucking anxiety. No <laughs> one gives a fuck about your anxiety. Shut yeah, the man. fuck up and get get in action or just sit the fuck down. That's the problem, though, again, with coastal hegemony. Yeah, man. Well, so do you see do you kind of see what you're doing? Because um, maybe we should get into your lyrics, too, which I haven't sometimes, you know, I haven't like parsed them out uh, totally. But like, do you kind of see what you're doing as being sort of the cultural thing to sort of start sort of cultural class war and ramp that up so that then there can be sort of practical change uh, sort no. of downstream from that? Or is it or is it not so deliberate like that? No, it's not really deliberate like that. Like the thing is for me, I've always hated that jackass at the protest with a guitar trying to get laid. <laughs> right, right. I've always hated that. So no, that's never been me. Um do, do, do you have groups that like uh groups that it makes it sound like the fucking temptations or something. Like, but do you do you have um like I don't know, are there is there music from the past or present that you that you feel like is sort of like effectively pushing things toward like social change or like class revolution, class war? Like, is there stuff where you're like, that's um, not a guy trying to get laid? Like, that's honestly, real. honestly, uh, I honestly am pretty cynical on that sort of thing. I think that I honestly think that the only thing that gets anything done politically is death threats guns and guillotines so however i do think that bob marley did a lot on jamaica for raising social awareness that is true okay and that had like real change so that's sort of well it, it like definitely had a yeah. it changed minds for sure but like even bob dylan didn't know why the fuck people thought that he was a protest song singer because he really wasn't he was a poet you know and right right yeah 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 you know, he was right he wasn't as as activist uh explicitly i guess or? no yeah he was he was he was pretty much saying that this has nothing to do with your whole hippie shit like i just want to fucking play my music and they asked yeah. him to play at the rally so he did it because that's work but like <laughs> yeah no yeah, yeah like i've i've always i'm pretty pragmatic when it comes to that i i think that music it can change minds and it can say something but i honestly think that with the things we're dealing with today i think that a protest song is something that some dumbass liberal would think up. Like, I mean, look right. at fucking, look at fucking John Lennon. Like yeah, he's... man. Well, 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 do you, um, let me see what I was going to say. Uh, well, so are you kind of involved? I'm not trying to like press you or whatever, but I mean, oh, do, no, no. Are, you, are you like involved in like practical, I mean, cause you're talking about guillotines and death threats and stuff. Are you doing that kind of thing or, or I don't have a party I agree with right now. So no, I yes. basically, the only options right now are bad options. We, we're looking at, at one side on the right, we have basically a bunch of old entitled fucking fossils bitching that they can't go get grass seeds for their lawns or fertilizer. And on the other side, we, ha we have a bunch of unorganized people who mean well, but have anxiety and they're huge fucking diaper people and they're all gonna die of a diaper rash and they all suck ass and fuck the dsa i i, I love your um i i love your disdain for quote-unquote anxiety because it's it's a it, it is a funny thing how you know as much as that as much as i take you know mental health seriously as an issue oh yeah it's, girl, it's a serious they're, they're, issue but but there but there really is uh i feel like you're getting at something that really is like this class-based uh kind of um uh, just this like uh th th this kind of uh awkward weird socially uh kind of thing it's that, just like really it really is an upper class or middle class it's thing an upper just, class, class horny don't weirdo. Have that luxury yeah i mean the thing is growing up like in working real jobs i just you know like i just can't really feel so i can't feel very bad for uh i don't know linus goldberg and his fear of women or right. <laughs> shut it's like shut the fuck up woody allen no one gives a shit it's funny i i really <clears throat> it's interesting you say woody allen because even even the, the molester shit aside uh it, it just even 
I'm not saying it's not true, but just without even addressing that, I got to say, I've always sort of, without thinking about it too hard, what's up, Laurent? Um, you got, got always Switzerland um, in the chat. I, um, yeah, it's funny because I, I always kind of assumed without thinking about it too hard, like, yeah, Woody Allen's cool. He's part of the whole thing. And then I, I, I recently watched uh, Annie Hall, and then I also watched, uh, this is not Woody Allen, but uh, 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 um, When Harry Met Sally, you know, yeah. uh, which is totally the same tradition. And I really was like, I was like, you know, it's not that I hate this, but I was like, this is done. Like this shit is yeah. done. I mean, the, the 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 hegemony that you're talking about, as far as power wise, isn't is not done. But these kind of props for that kind of like they it, they it, it's tr- starting to really fall. People are just not charmed by this. Like oh, like professionals in New York working it out, like in this charming, awkward kind of way. People are just they like, tried so fuck, hard to make done. mediocrity <laughs> fuckable. That's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's, yeah, then there is something, also, yeah, there is something even aside from the literal, even aside from the literal abuse allegations, there is something even bad about these unfuckable dudes making these sort of fantasy things about having their media power be able to, so they can, like, get, get pussy and be, like, charming in their neurotic, um, and it's, the, yeah, this is the thing, you know, I mean, I just I, I, I just uh, need some I don't, pussy. Yeah. I'm I, they, from there Brooklyn. Is this, I need pussy. <laughs> they, they, there is yeah no there is this thing with Woody Allen and that kind of thing where I'm like man I I hate there, there's this thing that I'm sure you're familiar with this 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 thing that Jews I mean I identify as Jewish enough that I'm saying us no, yeah. you know to an extent there's this thing of just being like you see something that's like embarrassing for your people and you're like bad for the Jews, dude. Bad, bad for the Jews. You know, it's like there is this kind of thing where I'm like middle American people, a lot of people look at like the Woody <laughs> Allen movie and they're just like, fuck that, dude. And I'm like, oh, like you're, you're not totally wrong. Man. Like, oh. So yeah, like uh Oh god. Oh uh, you got the little kiddo. This is I love this man. This is wholesome <laughs> shit right here. <laughs> But yeah, like the that's the funniest shit too because like I'm like not that Jewish, but it's like funny though because like I actually have a really funny story when I was talking to a friend of mine when he was telling me I should go on birthright. Uh, <laughs> you're not you're not a very pro-Israel cat, are you? You're not. No, I fuck yeah, Israel. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm one with you on that. But. Uh, he went on birthday. He's like, "Yeah, dude, there's so many like hot chicks. Like they were from the IDF and shit. And like they they bought it. I was, it's, it's like I met this one girl. She was really nice. Uh, Avatar. And I was like, "Oh, did she look like Adam Sandler?" And he stops for a second. He's like, "You ruined it for me, dude. You ruined it." For me. <laughs> yeah, but like totally racked up though, probably. Oh yeah, um, hot Adam but, um, Sandler. Do um. Oh, by the way, did you? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say though, as far as identifying, that's totally one of those things where I am like, I am not legitimately Jewish at all, as far as you know, it's my dad that's Jewish, not my mom. So real Jews would not claim me at all. But it's totally one of those things of like how how one looks, you know. I'm just like I oh. am. It's just like look, you know, this is this. I only got the hair. You know? I only got you the got hair. The hair, totally. But but it's it's really um, funny though. What was I gonna say? Um. I just think it's funny that Israel's just this like fascist country full of people who look like Adam Sandler. I'm going to bomb your house. <laughs> oh. well, 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 I, <laughs> well, I, I feel like, I feel like uh, Israel, the whole point of Israel is just like Jews after the Holocaust, just being like, we're not going to be fucking. Popular. It was a reaction. You know, it's, it's, it's just like, we're, we're going to go over the top. Oh, yeah. We're like, dude, I'm not getting my head pushed in the and i mean i don't blame the them gas chamber ever again you know it's no, just, yeah. and then it just turns into just turns into fucking meatheads uh fascists etc but fucking um have you seen uh uncut gems i haven't yet i hear it's really good it is so good dude and it's like the what it the way it is the jewishness of it is fucking really good dude it is not uh it's not woody allen man it's like no, a yeah. new a new uncomfortable i don't know how to just dis- i think some people might call it based or whatever i don't you know but well, it's, it's it's definitely yeah. that sort of like like mafia guy kind of yeah thing. yeah it's, it's it's like yeah we've all seen that like before like but yeah no that's 
No, that's actually really refreshing, though. I mean, I'd, I, think, I need to I see think it. you'd like it, or I'd, I'd be interested in your um, I'd be interested in your take on it, and just the the the, the symbolism of gems and money and culture and spirituality versus crass capitalism. It's it's uh, the, yeah, those guys. The are funniest, deep. the funniest shit too. It being like the Jewy guy, like on like each uh, stream, like that I've been on. People have several times told me to see that <laughs> on yeah, streams. <laughs> Are you the? You've been doing a bunch of streams, and and you're you're the um you, you're the Jewy guy on them. That's the role you end like, up like. Like some of them, some of them, yeah. Like because like I do like this uh, stream with um some comedian friends of mine, and ironically, I'm not the one who's usually doing stand up. I've only done stand up like I could count on my fingers. I was yeah. good at it, but I, I'm gonna probably get back to that. But you should. Actually. Ironically, Absolutely. I'm the only guy on these streams who's part Jewish and these guys are all comedians. That is interesting. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, uh, non Jews, <laughs> maybe, maybe the, you know, Goyim are taking over the, uh, the comedy vibe. It's possible. The Jews <laughs> have had it locked for so long, you know, maybe it's, no, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's just funny though, because like, yeah, like, um, I guess like uncut gems came up and they're like, Oh, you're Jewish. You should see it. I'm like, I'm barely Jewish. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Is your dad's side or mom's side? My mom's. Okay, so, well, so then that's that's a little I would, real. Yeah. yeah. On on that side, like if basically if I if I had decided to go and be Jewish, I would be Jewish. But I'm yeah. like, you know. But yeah, ethnically, I'm yeah a Jew. Who are the Who are the comedians? You, you, these are like local, like Detroit comedians, or from yeah, all these over, are Detroit or? guys. They're Detroit guys. They're really good. They got a, a really great uh, stream that's up every night. They're called Big Time Garbage. Really okay, funny big guys. Big time garbage. I'm gonna check that yeah. out definitely. And they, no, they do stand up or uh, and they do yeah. stand up around Detroit and they're also um and they're also yeah. like uh, podcasters and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really cool dudes. Uh, it's like the streams are always really fun because we just bullshit around about like just random stuff, joke around. Yeah. Um, I actually go yeah. on there because I actually have gone on there and like basically because like one thing I'm actually really good at is impressions and like. They've made me do that a few times, like Joe Biden, uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, you're killing it with Woody Allen. Is that going to go, man? It's fucking... No, I was doing Adam Sandler. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. Adam no yeah, I did yeah, Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm Adam Sandler. I'm just a crazy guy from Brooklyn. No, like. <laughs> yeah. I don't even. Is he even from Brooklyn? I'm not sure. No, I think he's. Yeah. I think No, he's from New Jersey. Yeah, wow. he's. I, yeah. I think he's. Yeah, he's from New Jersey. Um, he's fucking killing it. So deep. No, I got to see that film. I hear it's really really good. It's I've just been told over and over again by uh by um friends and stuff to see it. And like um it's actually kind of funny cuz every single one of my Jewish friends have, has told me to see it. So yeah. I think that's I think it's kind of become like the modern yentl. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, people are proud. People are proud. Oh no, yeah. That's Do, um, cool. Like uh Oh man, I keep I keep losing my train. What I was gonna what I was gonna ask about, like, um, yeah, just like Detroit scene shit. I don't know what what else because like what what are you up to like reading wise? I feel like have you read anything good lately? Because I feel like we always when we chat it always um, comes back to some kind of philosophy or something, and then we kind of on my the place, on but. my desk here actually. My brother bought me a wonderful book by uh, David Tibet called oh, uh, the, Moon, the Moon's at Your Door. I still have to like read read through it, but it's a collection of uh, like stories, folk tales, like just his favorite like nighttime stories. So I might actually oh, read dude. this to my kid. That um, sounds fucking dude. I I'm such a fucking David Tibet fan, man. Current ninety three is wonderful. Like, is oh yeah, so profound, man. So they profound. fucking rule, dude. Yeah, yeah. I should check that out. The movie, it's it's stories that he wrote, or it's like collected. no, it's a collection of them. He curated an entire storybook. So the moons, the moons at your doors. Um, is it is it illustrated like children's book wise with his with his awesome like uh, drawings or paintings? And it's stuff, or is... it's not all illustrated, but it has this wonderful sort of. Gra- I wish I had a camera now so I could show you, but it's got that like sort of like interesting sort of like cave painting sort of stuff he does. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really really nice. Uh, it might not even be illustrated by him. I have to I have to relook at it, but no, yeah, it's it's a wonderful book that my brother gifted to me for my birthday this year. He. Uh, he knows I'm a huge fan of David Tibetan stuff. He actually got me a current '93 shirt a while back, like the gargoyle. Oh, um, nice! Yeah, Dog's Blood Rising. I had a cool yeah. C '93 shirt, but it just got so torn up. I, I threw it out. It had the hexagram, the 
that that kind of cross the like hexagonal cr- yeah what do you call that the, yeah that 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 uh, cross on it um yeah i, always, I believe like, i don't know that's a sigil too that is yeah 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 i always like um current 93 and death in june i always say that they're kind of like the good cop bad cop of <laughs> neo folks <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. that, like the dave to bed's kind of like he's like yo my partner over here you know he wants to, he wants to he wants to fash out on you but you know i don't want to see that happen you know but you got to get gnostic you know you got to give me something i got runes you know um are you a death in june fan or oh yeah huge death in june fan yeah, dude me too fucking me love too. them very important that's like the funny that that's the funniest bit too like about neofolk is oh he's fashion out look at him with that guitar he's fashion out right (laughs) right, yeah he's like he's like doing it like he's just doing the fash just like well it's like it's Um, it's like funny though just because like everyone like people like a ton of people i know like at first like they hate it like death and june are nazis it's like no they're not they're not nazis well the weird thing with them is like they're not nazis but they're also not just being confrontational it's like somewhere in between they're just kind of yeah like, it's mostly they're, they're, they're like the fascism's right-wing. artistic yeah yeah it, it, it's like it's like he's super right wing and then he kind of rounds it like exaggerates it to like well, yeah shit just to kind of make it you know aesthetic yeah or, or whatever. That's, I believe, that's my impression i believe he's a national bolshevik now yeah 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 nazball man which is like i don't know but it's exactly kind of a, what <laughs> it's kind uh, of a meme but yeah, yeah I, some of these ideologies, man, I can't tell if they're an actual ideology or if it's just like Twitter emojis just stitched together into some fucking weird like, cult little meme moment. I, I kind of it's people keep people who I respect who are really smart keep telling me to read um, Alexander Dugan. You ever you ever fuck with him? Uh, I, I've never checked his stuff out. Yeah, I've read yeah, some I mean, I think yeah. Jack London and Kropotkin a bit uh, well, and a little I, bit of Gramsci. But. Are they? But I, I'm sorry. Like Dugan is actually like. Um, I guess he's Nazball. I guess he's like a national Bolshevik. Huh. But now he's like he's like this Rasputin looking dude. He looks like totally like Rasputin. He's like the most Russian and like looking fucking like wizard dude. And he's like I guess he's kind of like a conciliary to like to Putin or something. I don't know. He's like a scary Nazball kind of guy. But but fucking um yeah I don't know. Death in June, man. I'm like I still like C93 better, man, because. They're like yeah. weirder, you know. Death in June is like beautiful, but C ninety three is like actually kind of like confusing and like. No, yeah. You know, C ninety three is really weird. Yeah, they're like. I mean, it's kind of funny too because I believe he used to be a Nazi at one point, but was like he, he actually, like Dave, now it's bad. Yeah, at one point he was, but he really calmed down and just like became like. Uh, David Tibet, you know, <laughs> like he, well, he says, he's yeah, I mean, out. one of his slogans, he's always saying like, God is love, you know, and his stuff is so, I mean, yeah. it's so apolitical. A- yeah. Well, it depends on what you like mean. I don't know. Cause well, he became yeah. a Coptic. So like, um, yeah, yeah. But that's you know, it, religion. It, yeah. He, well, yeah. he, well, it plays though into a lot of his ideological sort of change, I think though, because nowadays he's a Coptic Christian. Um, so I think it's for him. I think it, it it kind of made him see something that's like you know transcendental. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I think it's definitely the him getting into Gnosticism really sort of kind of got him out of sort of I guess basing a lot of things on materialism and you know politics in general. I think he's really. I think for the most part though, he's been pretty non political throughout his life. Besides that, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. I think there's a certain. I think that sometimes there's stuff where like people don't have political intentions, but there is sort of, you can interpret things politically, even if they don't mean it that way. Like there's implications, you yeah. know, and there's this, there, there's this kind of attitude that is, it technically is kind of right wing, but not in a, not in a hateful Nazi way, but just this kind of, this attitude of like, things are getting worse, you know, like just being it's, like, things are de- not getting better through progress. They're declining. You know, it's and very it, it, it Nietzschean. Yeah, there's this thing of just like people are getting weak. You know, we need to get strong again, and like capitalism is weakening people, and and you know this kind of uh, yeah, this this kind of thing. Like, I mean, it gets it gets very expressly political if you're like uh, it's, on a death yeah. of June tip, and you're like, you know, Europe is dying, you know, death of the West. But even if you're not on that nationalist or racial tip, just still just being like human spirituality is deteriorating, human nobility and valor yeah. and honor, it's, it's, you know, that's not crazy, man. That's, that's, it's very <laughs> Nietzsche. But even, even like you have like 
uh, philosophers like Nietzsche and Marx, they had very similar ideas on that. Um, Marx actually was talking about, I guess, the spirit of the people. And then you're talking about Nietzsche's eternal return. I think that in general, there's always that sort of weird psychical realm attached to um, the zeitgeist of the time and politics. You know, that's it all really does interplay no matter what. I think that when we're like getting down to brass tacks, like, and that's, that's another funny thing. Spiritually speaking, I don't think that humans are very individualistic. I think that, um, I think that individ, like the whole need to be unique, in fact, is actually a very postmodern sort of idea, you know, but the, the reason why I I'm bringing it up though, is because if we're talking about the connection between politics, the way of, I guess you could say psychic current of how people like, think and move it's really all connected interspersed and, and inevitably it's going to flood into politics you know yeah like and that's the big thing is when you're like looking at nietzsche's eternal return marx's um thought of the spirit of the people i think that that in general it's it i think that it's it's hard to talk about because it's so much more complex than just the term zeitgeist um yeah yeah i mean i know that I know that Marx has more of spiritual, I mean, you wouldn't say mystical, but like you're talking about uh, uh, stuff that's, I know that he has a side that is kind of more spiritual and that and that his purely oh, yeah. materialist, sort of purely material analysis of things does connect with actually what, what seems to be, well, you know. I think the that... idea of the commodity fetish actually has kind of like a magic element yeah. to it or maybe he wants well, to strip the magic away and reveal but it's still well if we're talking if we're talking about magic too like it's all interconnected into the whole idea of the psychic realm i mean the thing is it's really almost a jungian thing you know um mm -hmm. i think that like I think, unchanging essences and archetypes and stuff or? sort of yeah i think that there's um i think it's more so just in the realm that i think that like if you're talking about that point of space i guess because it, it is in a way it's its own sort of space it's its own point of reality if we're talking about the psychical realm really honestly these things are like magic and stuff like that it's really interconnected with that no matter what i mean people can talk about what's real and what's unreal but the fact of the matter is um i honestly think that I honestly think that real is a very fluid term when it comes to that but i don't mean it in a postmodernist way like, because, you know, there is that I'm actually more talking about it in a classical, more, um, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, alchemical way. I, I, I mean it in the sense that, um, really, if, if we're thinking about it, it's still technically some part of reality. And the thing is, yes. with, with what we understand with quantum physics now and superposition, our mind's digestion of those points of time and, or whatever, or multiverses, that's still interlinked with the psychological realm. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's all you know, material uh, to some extent. It's all thoughts yeah. are real. I mean, thoughts are material. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I, I absolutely feel that. I mean, that could be some way that sort of uh, that could be that this sort of return of alchemy could sort of be like this intersection of Marx and um, and like mysticism in, in, in more of a yeah, like a like a more obvious way or, or, or something. You, actually, you know, I was you're talking about individualism. Like, do you because I know. um yeah, I know when you know you're talking about when you said people deep down aren't, aren't uh, totally individuals. Like, did you mean that that's a bad thing and a weakness, or that or that actually you're saying I that think, actually just by nature we aren't, and so I we, think shouldn't, that we shouldn't try yeah, to be? Yeah, it's not really something that's yeah, it's really not something I'm saying in like a polemic term. It's more like um, just I think that it's sort sort of an element of people, and I think that with that being said if we're talking about that sort of thing in the, you know, psychical sense, the spiritual sense, what you want to call it. I think that in general, that's why there is these currents in changes that always really uh, sweep into politics and things like that. Cause politics is really just, it's really just part of that whole digestion of reality. You know, it's what we're shitting out. So, I mean, if we're really like looking at it, I think that, People, though, spiritually speaking, aren't that individualistic. I think that they all have very basic uh, common things that they're going to do, behaviors even. I mean, mm -hmm. at, like a good behavioral example is that everyone wants to be unique. Right. Yeah. Is, is that is that an essential thing about human nature or is it more just kind of this modern 
so I think modern, it's a modern thing. Capitalist kind of liberal thing. I, I, I mean, think it's a modern thing. I think that um again when you go into postmodernism people kind of slip into this unintentional nihilism. Uh they don't really know where they are, but it's not like Nietzsche's nihilism. It's they don't really have they're pretty much lost. It's nebulous. People, yeah. culture, it all becomes nebulous. And I think that people try to, you know, kick and scratch for the for the one thing that's going to make them feel like they're a person. Um, and I think that's that's the problem is that it, they're nebulous. It's it, because this feeling of being lost culturally is nebulous and people aren't individualistic. That's the dangerous part about the whole postmodern thing. Like, like the whole loss of culture, loss of... Um, not tradition necessarily, because I'm not going to be like a person who's going to trick himself and saying that the past was always better. However, but right. if we're talking about the thing of progress, I remember you were doing a, you posted a video on that the other day. Uh, I honestly think if we're like looking at it, it's this whole nebulous sense of loss. People are only trying to be unique now and stand out because they know that they are intrinsically one not individualistic but they don't have a true identity anymore that's yeah 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 no 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 absolutely i mean that's and i'm i'm with you on this thing of being like e like admitting that that's a crisis but also also being realistic and and brave enough to realize that you can't like go back like we can't you know which is like sort of a lot of this reactionary right wing shit i find so stupid because it's mm -hmm. like oh like we've lost all values like let's go back to like feudal monarchy and it's like bro that's so stupid even, <laughs> even if that were morally acceptable like you can't like we cannot go back to thinking like you can't really go back to just like high Christendom, even if you fucking wanted to. Like it's it's over. Bro, like, so we know. need, <laughs> bro, we need a king, and I need to put leeches on myself right now. <laughs> leeches, like, bringing back leeches, that's sick. I mean, we do um, use leeches still. Uh, medically. You leeches? Still? <laughs> yeah, uh, they're actually for draining uh, blood from behind a tourniquet to perform surgery. It's really fascinating, actually. They're actually a great animal because they um, they're uh. Um, venom is actually a blood thinner, a disinfectant, and an anesthetic. No shit. Yeah, so leeches do, do, make make sure you don't get hurt. <laughs> do people use them now in modern medicine? No. Yeah, no, they do all the time. My father's seen it done. He's a nurse, um, but they use it for basically uh, draining uh, blood from behind a tourniquet because they have to stop the bleeding, but it bunches up and swells, and that can cause further damage. So the leeches come in, and they'll they'll drain the blood so that way they can perform the surgery and have no complications. It's a I wonderful no technique. Idea. I had yeah. no idea that was still a thing. I always think of bloodletting as being like in the middle ages, like if you're like in a bad mood or something, I throw leeches. No over leeches. Yeah. It's leeches like, had their like the poison. Leeches so. definitely had their, uh, they had their um, abilities because they basically are a natural aspirin too. So, but um, the, uh, other thing that you'd be shocked to find out is that lobotomy is still in use and it works. <laughs> Who's getting lobotomized? People with brain pressure. They use an ice pick method. They go in through your eye socket, by your eye. They do a quick knock. Only side effect is a black eye that goes away in a couple days and you feel better. No shit. Yeah, so why are we, what are reactionaries bitching about? We're still doing all this medieval shit. <laughs> just, enjoy, just enjoy your leeches and your lobotomy. Well, that's it, the thing. It's, yeah. That brings me to a point that like you were talking about with these reactionaries is it's, I don't personally think that we have to go back, but we have to make a better version. We have to have a, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ad admit what's we, been lost Admit yeah. that there, that, that we are, that we are in a crisis and have been for a little while because tradition has been liquidated. Well, culture's a, yeah, culture's a learning curve. You know, it's, it, we, we'll, you know, we take the good and throw out the bad, but the problem is we're not throwing out enough of the bad. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. This is why someone like current someone like David Tibet, just, just he has. There's a way that he is reaching for some kind of tradition or, or some kind of reconnection with spirituality, mysticism, something higher than the individual. But it's like, but he's he's not making it in these overly simplistic terms of like blood and soil, race. Like you know, he's yeah. kind of like not being as crude as that. But well, the trying thing to is, recapture, in, you know, what's been lost. And those things, too, are so, like, novel and stupid to focus on simply because, like, honestly, I think that when it comes to it, people, again, aren't that different at their core. 
everywhere around the world. Like, for example, um, in almost every tribe around the world, they welcome a visitor with a feast and humor. That's a fun I, yeah, fact. Right. That's the like, word what, what ethos means, like in Greek, right? It's the, yes. you know, the, the word ethos means like yeah, humans, hospitality. Yeah. Well, yeah, but humans do have an ethos. And the thing yeah. about but the thing about it, though, is like the thing is like to focus on those sorts of like really, I don't know, just kind of childish things like the blood and soil. Thing. It's it's like no one's right, really that right. different. You know, I think that it's uh, the big issue for us yeah. is really I think that humans are sort of just spiritually maligned at the moment. You know, I think it's more so an issue of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, just the sense that there's nothing higher than the self and there's no higher values and we need to get onto some kind of, um, I mean, even if humans aren't that different, I mean, in the past, you know, societies were more closed and, and you know, things weren't globalized. So yeah. Even if people are, even if people are more similar than they are different, I mean, there's still a lot to be. To and be that's the out, thing, you know? too, is like, like globalization, while inevitable, the problem with it is it only really serves the powers that be. It really, mm, mm. it really just serves the whole capitalist machine. Like the thing is, we have not benefited from it. We are in under quarantine. The thing is, we can call it globalization. We can call it, you know, one world connection. It's imperialism. R yes. Yeah. There's no word. Yeah, yeah. There's no other word for it. It's imperialism down to the core of it. And we're definitely not totally um, benefiting from from it. I mean. We're talking well, most are not. I mean, most oh, yeah. people are not. Most aren't. It's only a, a minority of people in the world that are. S yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. I I always just just on the vibe of like reaction and people wanting to go back because of all the, the sort of crisis of globalism. It's it's always funny to me. Like you know, you're talking about you're talking about um hospitality and welcoming uh, guests and this sort of you know in ancient times there was a vibe of welcoming the other and the outside it's always funny to me just how people now they're 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 the whole reactionary vibe of wanting to go back it's like man like you know people are pussies now and like we used to be these tough warriors and it's like okay it's fine. Not, it's like it's kind not, of like yes we're pussies compared yeah. to being t warriors but it's not like there were no morals or ethics back then it was just I don't know, man. Love I'm, and hospitality. It's just. You know, I'm gonna I, become a shit flinging caveman activist, dude. You make fire. <laughs> no, I know that's like the vibe. No, it's like fantasies about the past. Like you know what I, I mean? I know. It's, 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 it's just like projecting some shit. It's like I mean, yes, we thing. are kind of weakened by hunching over machines, and like, yes, there's a weakening, but it's not like the answer is to become a fucking caveman. You know, it's like exactly uh, like. But I, there is actual like right wing grifters who like have like the gorilla mindset. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I know all about gorilla mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I take no. my brain pills every day. One hundred. No, that's a total. Yeah, new new tropic shit or whatever to like. Not, I mean, just I, take I your not be tropics, to, don't be a pussy pill. You use new tropics? You're into it? I have, I have. It's it works. It's great. But the thing is, the grifters and shit are not great. They're stupid as fuck. Yeah, like yeah. The, the thing is too is like the the Infowars caveman. <laughs> it's a nootropic they came out with. It's like such a funny thing. Like nootropics are supposed to make your mind work better, better, it's smarter, or or more yeah, Efficient. more efficiently like processing. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, it's just so funny to like. I had to take my caveman pills today. <laughs> I know. Like the, yeah. Back yeah. in ancient times when they'd take their caveman pills. I, I know. Well, yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about, like, not going back. It's like, look, if we're going to, like, become less of pussies, we have to admit that we all are pussies and we're all in this together. And you can't go back to some shit Again, it has to be no longer. We're all in, you know, yeah. we're, we are has, where we are, you know. It's like, it has to be a, a cultural mutation, not a progression. That's yeah. the big thing is that culture is nebulous now. And the thing is, that's that's the big problem. It's an it's an amoeba, you know. Yeah. And the the thing is, we're we're really just stuck in this shape that doesn't work for us. And the thing is, we may have been in a shape that was similar back then a few minutes ago, but it's like we got to change again. It's not. It, that's the thing is, it's not. That's the thing. Progress is such a fucking business head, coke brain like buzzword, you know. Yeah. Well, it's it's supposed to be socially progressive but it's also super capitalist and only serves certain people so it's like this weird it's like morally 
cool for like certain groups of people, but also it just fucks yeah. over other people economically. It's like a weird. You know who's um. You know who's super reactionary culturally and is like it like part of this stupid thing that we're talking about with the reaction, but is kind of funny and like like do you ever fuck with a uh, bronze age pervert you, you know do you know i've uh, never heard of the guy <laughs> yeah check out bronze age pervert he has a thing bronze age mindset is self, <laughs> self-published book you you would definitely you would definitely think bronze age pervert is fucking funny he has this like podcast where he talks in this weird like fake russian accent and it's just like all this he's like a nudist bodybuilder like right, right wing he's like a gay right wing like gay right wing bodybuilder guy it, it, it's it, bap, bap, bap is worth bap is worth a look i mean it's like, oh my god yeah, then yeah. i remember like another funny like pundit which i don't think he really knows what he thinks about things is the golden one He's like this. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bap is like is like the golden one, but kind of like more advanced and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, the golden one. We should uh, we should honestly just start a caveman podcast where we just like like have like weird flute music and stuff. Or just, like, <laughs> just straight caveman Uga Nash. <laughs> yeah, just straight Ooga Booga, like fucking uh, yeah, bone flutes. Just straight fucking just straight up bone flute. Yeah, just we, talking we, about, talking about bull roarers and like knocking rocks. Yeah. <laughs> No, totally. Yeah, just take it all the way. Well, we, yeah, we've talked about a lot of like, we, you know, weird like cultural things that we were gonna start that we like haven't fully done. But they're like, I don't know. I, I feel like you're poised. I feel like you're ready to add or not, man. I feel like you're ready to follow through on like an actual cultural initiative that's gonna like be more than music. I think I think you're gonna do that, man. I don't know what it's gonna be, and I'm fully on board when it when it sparks off, man. I'm, I'm gonna be the first, the first I in think... line. I think first I'm gonna start writing uh um unga bunga me make money. It's <laughs> yeah, gonna be that's... a it's gonna be a uh Stone Age financial advisory book. You know? <laughs> yeah, you'll get you'll get far with that, I think, quickly, man. <laughs> no, I honestly think it'd be really, really fucking funny to start a caveman podcast just to like just to clown on all those pundits. Yeah. That's like the funniest shit. Like I love I just love that though. It's just <laughs> that that whole thing too like because that's the thing like ted kaczynski for example he ha- he's actually a pretty smart dude but that was yeah. his problem that he's, was his problem like just it, the eco just the eco fascist like straight up well just not just that but return, yeah like luddite yeah vibe or whatever yeah the luddite vibe like the thing is like and yeah technology it's way too overboard and whatnot but he basically thought that like uh back then was better just it's just funny like because you have like the German word uh, "sensucht," which is wanting to go home to a place that doesn't exist. I didn't know um, that word. That's awesome. Sensucht. Yeah, uh, it's it's a German word, and basically, I think that that's what a lot of these reactionaries are dealing with. Is yeah, no, absolutely. something that well, yeah, yeah. Well, see that that's that's the thing. It's like being against the idea of progress with a capital P, but also not having the sensucht thing. You know, that's kind of that is the imagination, the vision that needs to to happen, like something where like, OK, we, we things need to change culturally in a way that is not re- regressive, but also isn't brainwashed following this capital P idea of progress that has been kind of just yeah, like, m- it's, running this motor without yeah, any they, fucking real yeah. sense of where it's going or something. Well, it's like make a decision. Just don't join a cult. You know what I mean? <laughs> so many things are cults, though, man. People are just scrambling, just like micro cults online, man. It's just like people are just <laughs> uh, the morgue ripping... guy. <laughs> Morg, he's like this. Yeah, he's like this guy who's who tries to use Morg, like no, no. color theory to explain metaphysics, and like he dresses up like blonde Marilyn Manson, <laughs> and he's just like, "Death is an illusion," and I'll tell you why. And he uses really basic shit like his he's got like diaper brain like he's really fucking he's <laughs> diaper not brain man advanced he's not just good. Late stage advanced um, diaper brain yeah my wife said he commented on one of my w- wife's pictures on social media he put an emoji con what was the emoji i think it was alien or something i don't even remember oh god I need I gotta to castrate check this guy that guy. Out. Morg. Is it spelled like morg, like where you go to die? Yeah, or where you, where you <laughs> yeah. Die? yeah, dude. He's, he's, he's got like fucking, he's got fucking brain spirits, dude. He's a shaman. He's a <laughs> There's fucking so many shaman. Of these, these micro things. I've never heard of morg. I got to check it. Yeah, color theory. All right. I'm, I'm on it, man. I'm on it. 
I'll check out Morg. You check out Bronze Age Pervert. We're gonna we're gonna we'll both go up a level of fucking pseudo <laughs> pseudo, <laughs> pseudo <enlightened>, mystics, <laughs> enlight, enlightened shit, shit. prophets. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Well, dude, I think yeah, I think an hour and a half is solid, man. We could go for days, but I I think uh, I like I like ninety minutes, man. I think that's a good. Oh no, yeah, think, anytime, dude. I think we're I think we're good, man. This is. Uh, Dog, thank you so much for talking to me, man. I'm uh, we we haven't we barely even talked in person. It's all been online, and then when we met in person three years ago, right? I mean, oh yeah, man, that's been it. Yeah. Well, so, w- w- what should what should people look out for next? Like, what's the like? I mean, just like I mean, I know you're doing a bunch of projects. Is it is it the, the Drove or is that just kind of? Uh, like, I'm making a new, a new I'm making a new Olms album. Uh, I'm also soon going to be a. Uh, I'm going to be moving into a cave and throwing dung because that's progress. Dung um, growing, man. <laughs> no, but yeah. Dung capture. But I might actually start streaming soon. Like um, You should absolutely stream. You got to do a stream, man. You got to be the MC here, you know? No, yeah. I, I'll, uh, it'd be like fun to like just have people on and, uh, you know, talk and stuff. Do it, uh, man. Every once in a while. Probably not going to be a ton, but maybe like once a week. But yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, just... Yeah, hit me up sometime. It's great being on. Yeah, man. So yeah, new ohms. Everyone check that out. Um, I got like a link. Well, the the brand new ohms single is there's a link in the in the description. But then um, but yeah, then yeah, then Dennis is gonna have a whole new record uh soon, man. So look out yep, for that. Yeah, on the way. Dude, hang in there with the quarantine with the fam. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. It, it just warms my heart, man. I don't know if I don't know if we're gonna have a kid, but we're gonna have to fucking figure it out pretty soon if we want the kid to be in any way. Like function for sure for sure <laughs> but uh yeah no it's inspiring to see the family man vibe yeah dude it's it's awesome yeah cool man all right i'll uh i'll see you on the interwebs man peace dude take right. care peace thanks all right there you have him man dennis from Olms uh and and all the other projects man we're gonna have more live streams i i think yeah i think once a week is a good time for the live streams I'm going to come back with a couple more of these little quick five minute, uh, you know, little micro idea things, you know, I'm going to come back with those. They're a little easier to digest than the, than the long ones too. Um, damn, we got all these, uh, oh, nice. We got a Brazilian fan of Ohms. Love your song so much. Look at this. You got Espresso, uh, Espresso Alternativa. Yeah. Dennis, man. It looks like you got some, you got some South American fans. Sick. Go get down there and play a show, man. Play some, do a tour. All right. Thanks for everyone tuning in. Bye-bye.